July 14th, garden update. Uh, just a quick video, it's been a while. Um, I've been busy with other projects, but I just want to document all the stuff that's working and what's not working this year. Um, I've had some pretty good successes and um, not too many failures. It's been a good year, even though the weather's been kind of trying. Uh, the weather started off uh, really cold in the winter, then we had a quick hot spring, and then it cooled off, and then it got hot again, so the fall plants were a little tough, but um, overall I've made it work out pretty good. The uh, I tried a couple new varieties this year, a new, I think this is called the Millionaire eggplant, which is a really good eggplant. It started off, it's a smaller plant than the, um, and it's scrawnier than the Black Beauty, which is next to it, the big one. Um, but you get a lot earlier harvest, and I think I like the eggplant a little better. Nah, well, they're different, they're different. It doesn't store as long, you know, you get a couple more days out of the Black Beauty. Those little ones dry up and shrivel up a little quicker if you don't eat them right away. Uh, the tomatoes have been great. This is the first year I've gone back to the big tomatoes, and uh, these were, the majority of the tomatoes I did this year were um, heirloom, and my parents got them from uh, Thomas Jefferson's place up in Virginia. Uh, it's the ones that he supposedly grew back in the day. Uh, I don't know the names of them, but I need to figure this out so I can save the seeds. But these were really good. They're tasty little tomatoes. Um, the peppers, these are poblanos that I saved the seeds years ago and started again this year. This is a hybrid um, hot one that I got from the store. Anaheim. It's supposedly like the eighth of the heat of a jalapeno. But I haven't tried it yet, but it sounds really good. I'm going to try to stuff those. Um, the beets have done really good. This is a different variety of beet. It's kind of like a Detroit red, but it's a little taller. Um, and it, they're growing really well. I like the size of them. They're not too big. And I did a whole bed of those this year. This first year I've done this bed was all beets. I just kind of broadcasted them and they've grown kind of wild and together. And I've just been picking onesies and twosies as I want them. And this bed is just full of them. I think I'm about to do a big harvest on them. Or start doing a couple couple uh, big harvest each week to get those out of there. Because they're, they're ready to come out. The tomato plants here. I did all the big tomato plant varieties this year. Um, kind of a departure of my two of the smaller ones. I'd kind of given up on the big ones back here just because the summers here in North Carolina it gets so hot that it's hard to set these fruit. But these varieties I've done this year have set the big fruits and even in pretty big clusters too and held them. Um, usually once that heat comes I'll I'll have some early sets and then by the end of the year I have all these blank, blank spaces where those blooms just don't want to set. Kind of like that one, but you know, overall these two plants, that, which I've branched four or five ways, they put a lot of fruit on. So I'm really happy with this little bunch of two plants here. Dinosaur Kill is doing great as always. Um, the asparagus has done really great. This is the first year um, I've harvested off of it. I harvested some early spring stuff and after that I let it grow because I want this to really hardy up and this is the first year I feel confident next year that I can um, probably harvest pretty heavily off of it and it'll still come back. So this little batch here of asparagus and I've got another batch over there. Um, both have done great so I'm going to have a lot of asparagus next year. The Egyptian spin, or not Egyptian, the Egyptian walking onions that were here, they started off doing great in the spring, and then they just kind of petered off. So I'm curious to see what happens. I tried to transplant a few of those, but I'm not sure how well it did. Um, so I'm not sure how successful those are going to be. I think this bed just needs to get better and better soils. This is a in-ground bed that I've slowly tried to convert over the years. But this front part of it, that's for the chickens. I just screwed a bunch of lettuce. And, and rose and some kale and Swiss chard that I've been feeding to them. So all that's just bolting lettuce that I just pull up one a, one a day and one or two a day and give to the chickens. This bed's done great. Um, I tried peppers back here again to see how they would do. And they've done decent. 
the basil plant did good. I think this is like a Thai basil, which is doing great now, but it had a really slow start. I think it just likes the heat. Um, kind of surprising for the basil plants. But early on, it was having these little black burns everywhere, like it was almost too cool. But as it's gotten hotter, it's done a lot better. It's starting to go to flower now, but um, just kind of pick these off. But it's been a very good plant for me. It came in perfect timing with the uh, tomatoes. Uh, the Swiss chard is doing great. The black beauty plant or uh, eggplant is doing great. You can see that dust on there. That's the diatomaceous earth, which has worked great. I just have to get up here and uh, sprinkle it on it every so often. It's a really good organic way to keep your eggplants in check because those little black beetles, they're little microscopic beetles, they put these holes all in your leaves, but as long as you stay on it with that diatomaceous earth, you'll, uh, you'll let them survive and put fruit off pretty easily. Um, the pepper plants back here, they've grown great. I mean, the, the leaves, everything's growing wonderfully. It's just not setting fruit like I'd want. Um, I, I've taken a kind of a hands-off approach to gardening this year, so I probably could have forced some more blooms with my nutrients, but I really didn't even bother. And as it's getting older, I think I'm going to have a, a late crop of peppers back here. So I'm starting to get some more blooms as it gets older. But some of these, this one's got one, two, three, four, five, about six on it. So I can't complain. But then this one has none. <laughs> and then I have that one over there. It's got about four on it. And the other one's got none. So the pepper plants are kind of spotty back here. I think I just need to find the, the right varieties to grow in the back where it's less sun. But this is... Uh, one of those Thomas Jefferson plants. I'm kind of getting my beans growing together with the tomato plants. And as usual, this was, I'd given up on the pole beans back here. They just never put any flowers off for some reason. They grow a bunch of vines and never put flowers off. Um, unlike the bush beans, which just do wonderful. Um, I just do a handful of bush beans and I get Ton, I, I get like three big flushes off of those bush beans in there. I mean, I, I should have done a little bit more, but I wanted to keep it spaced out pretty good this year. Um, there's another pepper plant. I think that's probably Del Toro or a, no, that looks like that might be a, I'm not sure what kind that is. I've got a couple hybrids that I've created accidentally, I think. Um, the... Let's see, the ground cherries, they're just volunteers from the years before, and they're not doing too much this year. As much, oh, well, you can see that one right in there. It's got some of the lanterns hanging off of it. It's starting to load up. Maybe it's going to load up later in the season. But those take a lot of space up. I need to uh, start doing those on the corners out here in the wood chips. This was a, hey, Mr. Wasp. This was a one of the tomato plants I got from uh, Thomas Jefferson, but it didn't do well. So I let a volunteer pop up and take over. So we'll see what this volunteer is. You can see the beans; they're all loaded up for the third time here. I need to get out here and pick these. Swiss chard is doing great. I've been harvesting the crap out of that. Um, I think this is a chocolate stripe. This plant's kind of been back and forth. It almost died in a few times and it keeps coming back. But it put off this one big cluster, so I'm really nursing it, trying to get these 10 or so fruit off of here. And it's starting to look like it's wanting to put more fruit on, so we'll see where this goes by the end of the year. The asparagus back there is doing great. I was a little worried about this patch. I ended up planting uh, three more uh, plants in there. And uh, it's really just taken off. You can see it's still shooting up new growth here. So that's going to be a nice uh, 
set of plants uh, next year. I stuffed a little eggplant back there that I've gotten one off of, but it's just getting shaded out too much. I should just pull that to get the airflow a little better. Got a tomato plant stuffed in here, kind of growing through. And it's loading up. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. It's got thirteen on. I've already picked three off, so that's done good, even though it's shaded out there. The beans kind of help hold them in place, which is kind of nice. I was, I was hoping those pole beans would work well with the uh, tomatoes, kind of act as, as a trellis. But once again, I did the last year or two. These little uh, nylon footings have really worked well with the um, birds. I, when I grow the big tomatoes back here, it usually is kind of worthless because the birds get them before I get them. But those nylon footies have worked really good. I recommend them highly to anybody. I put a couple uh, tomato plants here, but you can kind of see that's where that shade break is. And uh, I was getting a couple on there, but that other tomato plant is not doing anything. That Malabar spin is just starting to come up. But um, yeah, that in the front yard, I've got the front yard this year. I did the Black Beauties, Millionaire eggplants, and a couple variety of the peppers, and all those are doing great. Um, so overall, it's been a good year. Um, I also got three new chickens which they are doing great. Black stars they're called, and I recommend these guys to everybody that gets chickens because they pump the eggs out, very docile, just really good overall chickens. And this is another great little tool I got. It's worth $22. So it's a nice little already put together um, water for the chickens which I was having to come out here like every other day in the summer and refill their water um, I got a five gallon bucket hook that up to it it's gravity fed it's got a little water uh, air bleed here a little valve you bleed the air off of it and then it gets a really good seal on there and it makes for a great water so so far, really good. The uh, garden's been productive. The chickens are doing great. So it's been a great year. Peace out.